Hello again, my fellow pilots and my fellow aircraft maintenance personnel. Your host is always Haysam Ali. And I'm an aviation technical instructor. Welcome to my aviation nuggets for today. Today, in the upcoming short minutes, we are going to discuss a little bit regarding the Airbus A320 pressurization system. The Airbus A320 pressurization system. Okay. So at the beginning, I need to tell you that this is not a formal training. It is a performance support tools. So don't use for flight or maintenance and always consult your formal manuals and your formal training. Okay. So why I'm doing this session to increase your performance and to increase your awareness and understanding of the Airbus A320 aircraft systems. Okay. So at the beginning, I need to tell you that the pressurization system of the single aisle family, pressurization of the fuselage, controlling the altitude of the cabin is a major important function inside the aircraft systems. Pressurization system is coming from the pneumatic and the air conditioning system. And how we can control the pressurization of the fuselage? or the cabin altitude you know that always in aviation we are calling or, or uh, whenever we talk about the pressurization system we are going to speak about aircraft altitude and the cabin altitude aircraft altitude and cabin altitude so altitude are always or is always being used as an indication of pressurization so how we can control the altitude of the cabin and what is the normal altitude that the cabin going through during the flight? I need to tell you that the normal cabin altitude is 8,000 feet, 8,000 feet. And this altitude is protected whenever an excess of this altitude happen. The oxygen system may be available to protect the life on the aircraft and to protect the passenger and the flight crew. And the flight crew. So, the pressurization system come from the pneumatic and the air conditioning system, and how we can control the pressurization of the aircraft by controlling the amount of air going through the outflow valve from inside the cabin. So again, the pressurization system philosophy is very simple. We control the amount of air inside the cabin going outside through one outflow valve. One outflow valve. In the single aisle family, we have only one outflow valve to control the pressurization or the cabin altitude. To control the pressurization or the cabin altitude. Okay, so that this outflow valve is of a major importance or has a major importance so it must have many way of control this outflow valve and the many way to operate this outflow valve actually this outflow valve operates by three motors two automatic motors and one manual motor two automatic motor and one manual motor so that for controlling the outflow valve, we have actually two system. System one is CBC one with motor one. And the system two is CBC two or cabin pressure controller two plus motor two. So, for auto mode to control the outflow valve actually we are having two systems to control the outflow valve two automatic system cbc1 with motor one constitute system one and the cbc2 with motor two constitute system two so that if if you ask yourself, what if both automatic system fail? What if both automatic system fail? Do we have another hope or do we have a last resort? Yes, we have. We have a third motor that may operate the outflow valve called the manual motor 
But in that case, you will control this third motor from the pressurization panel by a toggle selector. From pressurization panel by a toggle selector. Okay. So, as you can see here, the pressurization system on the single aisle family normally operates automatically. Yes, it operates automatically. And we are not having only one system to control automatically, but two system. System 1, CBC1 plus motor 1. And the system 2, CBC2 or cabin pressure controller 2, control motor 2. Okay. So again, the pressurization system on the single aisle family normally operates automatically to adjust the cabin altitude and rate of climb to ensure maximum passenger comfort and safety. The pressurization system allows the passenger to be comfort inside the aircraft, allows the cabin altitude to be good inside the aircraft, and allows the passenger to breathe normally inside the aircraft. Okay, everybody. So, let's proceed. What about the pressurized area inside the Airbus A320 single aisle family? The pressurized areas are the cockpit, the avionics bay, the cabin, and the cargo compartment. Again, the pressurized area are cockpit, avionics bay, the cabin, and the cargo compartment. So what about the unpressurized area? The area forward of the forward bulkhead which is the underneath the radium of the aircraft and the tail cone of the ABU compartment ABU compartment or the area behind the aft bulkhead and the main landing gear wheel well area main landing gear wheel well area so this is the pressurized and unpressurized area of the single aisle family. Pressurized and unpressurized area of the single aisle family. So, the main component of the pressurization system is the outflow valve, as you can see here. Outflow valve, one outflow valve. This outflow valve may be operated automatically or manually automatically by the cabin pressure controllers and manually from the pressurization panel and manually from the pressurization panel for operation of the outflow valve it do have three motors two automatic motor controlled by two cabin pressure controllers and one manual motor controlled from the pressurization panel so I need to tell you that during aircraft operation, the aircraft will fly, okay, we have a rate of climb to the aircraft and rate of climb to the cabin, and they are totally different. Rate of climb of the aircraft depend on flight control, but rate of climb of the cabin will depend on the outflow valve. Yes, the aircraft can go from ground until maybe 35,000 feet. But the cabin will go from ground to 8,000 feet. Normally, the single aisle family is controlled and designed to be, or the cabin to go to 8,000 feet. 8,000 feet. Okay. So, in order to allow the cabin pressure controller to control the outflow valve automatically, the cabin pressure controller must receive data from the air data inertial reference unit and from the flight management and the guidance computer. Adder you and the flight management guidance computer. Okay, this is regarding for uh, aircraft altitude, aircraft altitude. Okay, so aircraft altitude is fed to the cabin pressure controller through the ADRU. And what about the cabin altitude? How it is sensed? There is a sensor inside the cabin. Probably it will be on the cabin pressure controller to sense the cabin altitude. Cabin altitude. Because as I told you, the aircraft can go to 35,000 feet, 
but the cabin need to go to 8,000 feet only, 8,000 feet. So we must have sensor for aircraft altitude and another sensor for cabin altitude. The sensor for aircraft altitude is from the air data sensor, air data sensor, okay? But the sensor for cabin altitude is inside the cabin, is inside the cabin. Okay, everybody. So, the concept of the system is simple. The concept of the pressurization system is very simple. Air is supplied from the air conditioning bags through the mixer unit to the pressurized area mentioned before. And an outflow valve is used to regulate the amount of air allowed to escape from the pressurized area. Again, this is the concept of the pressurization system. Depend on one outflow valve. So the concept of the system is very simple. Air is supplied from the air conditioning bags to the pressurized area. And one outflow valve is used to regulate the amount of air allowed to escape from the pressurized area. Allowed to escape from the pressurized area. So again, the pressurized area is avionics bay, cockpit, cabin, cargo compartments, cargo compartment. Again, cockpit, avionics bay, cabin, and the cargo compartments, and the cargo compartments. Okay, everybody. So, automatic control of the outflow valve is provided. Yes, we have auto mode to control the outflow valve. Auto mode depend on system one and system two. Okay, system one is CBC one plus motor one. And system two is CBC two or cabin pressure controller two plus motor two. So again, automatic control of the outflow valve is provided by two cabin pressure controllers, CBC. Each cabin pressure controller control one electric motor on the outflow valve assembly. The cabin pressure controllers interface with other aircraft computers to optimize the pressurization, depressurization schedule. So as I mentioned, pressurization schedule that the cabin will go from maybe on ground or maybe from the airport elevation until 8,000 feet. Depressurization schedule start from 8,000 feet until the uh, airport elevation, airport elevation. Okay. So, always the cabin pressure controller will be in need of airport elevation from the flight management guidance computer or performance database. Performance database inside the flight management guidance computer supplies a cabin pressure controller in the auto mode regarding elevation of the landing airport. Regarding elevation of the landing airport and also the elevation of the takeoff airport. This is why the flight management guidance computer need to supply data to the cabin pressure controller. This data mainly is the airport elevation because the cabin pressure controller in order to control the pressurization and the depressurization schedule, it must be fed by airport elevation from the uh, performance database Sorry, from the navigation database, I'm sorry, from the navigation database inside the flight management guidance computer. Okay. So let's proceed. There are two automatic pressurization system. There are two automatic pressurization system. Each CBC and its electric motor make up one system. So the auto mode depends on auto two auto system only one system operate at a time with the other system acting as a, as a backup in case of failure and the system in command will alternate each flight the system in command will alternate each flight system one cbc one with motor one system two is cbc two with motor two both system alternate each flight both system alternate each flight. Okay. So, 
What about if both automatic system fail? Both auto mode fail. Do we have a last resort? Do we have a last chance? Yes, a third motor on the outflow valve may be controlled from the pressurization panel. A third motor on the outflow valve may be controlled from the pressurization panel. So a third motor is installed for manual operation of the outflow valve in case of both automatic system fail. A third motor is installed for manual operation of the outflow valve in case of both automatic system fail. From where exactly? From the pressurization panel. From the pressurization panel. Okay. To protect the fuselage against excessive cabin differential pressure, safety valves are installed on the rear pressure bulkhead. This location is the location for rear pressure bulkhead. You know that the pressurized area starts from the forward bulkhead until the rear bulkhead. Again, the pressurized area of the fuselage starts from a forward bulkhead until a rear bulkhead. Here in the Airbus A320 family, we have two safety valve to protect the fuselage against excessive cabin differential pressure because we need to protect the fuselage regarding delta B. Always we have high pressure inside the cabin and low pressure outside the cabin. So the fuselage always suffer from pressurization and the depressurization schedule and the fuselage structure must be controlled and must be protected against excessive delta B positive or negative so for this case or for this hope we have two safety valve are installed on the rear pressure bulkhead and the safety valve also protect against the negative differential pressure we need to protect the fuselage against both positive and the negative differential pressure against both positive and the negative differential pressure okay so we have here a unit called residual pressure control unit rbcu residual pressure control unit the residual pressure control unit controls the residual pressure in the cabin and takes over the control of the outflow valve automatically by providing power directly to the manual motor of the outflow valve. When the aircraft lands, okay, and as soon as the aircraft is on ground, we need to assure that the outflow valve is fully open until the aircraft reaches a gate or reaches a parking position because we need a safety operation of opening the door after the aircraft bark. So if any residual pressure inside the cabin and anybody try to open the door, if this residual pressure available, the door may be blown out and may hurt the operating personnel. So for that case, Airbus introduced what it called the residual pressure control unit to control residual pressure in the cabin and takes over the control of the manual motor directly after the aircraft land to assure that the outflow valve is fully open on ground. So until the aircraft going to the parking position, we assure that there will be no any more residual pressure inside the cabin. Any more residual pressure inside the cabin. Okay, everybody. So I need to tell you again as a summary, FMGC need from needed because from the navigation database, the cabin pressure controller are always in need of airport elevation and also ADRIU is needed to supply aircraft altitude to the cabin pressure controller to the cabin pressure controller as a summary we have two automatic system and one manual system to control the outflow valve cabin pressure controller are located inside the avionics compartment and one outflow valve exists for the single aisle family what is the concept of the system? It is simple, control the rate of air going outside of the fuselage provided by the air conditioning packs. Thank you always for your good listening and always fly safely and maintain your aircraft very safely. From Cairo, Egypt, your host was Haysam Ali and I'm an aviation technical instructor. Please don't forget to subscribe to my aviation nugget on YouTube 
and please stay tuned for the next session. Thank you and goodbye.